What's going on, everyone? Hunter Doyle from Philly Insider Podcast with Sanjay George and Nate Tussing today. Another NFL playoff preview this week, which we're really excited about. And um, our last one did pretty well, so we appreciate you guys for that. And, yeah, I mean, there's less games, so it's going to be easier to go over this week. Last week was a lot, just with super wild card weekend, which was a lot. Well, you know, one of us went perfect, six for six. Actually, two of us went perfect, Sanjay, because I changed my pick in the chat, so get wrecked. But, um, (laughs) yeah, so – um, just FYI, I did change my pick to the Browns in the chat, but you know, on the podcast, it was kind of a win-win for me since I could, could have played it off either way, but you know, since the, since the Browns won, I got to play it off that way. Um, but yeah, make sure you guys go check out the NFL, um, NFL talk all 32 Facebook page, because, um, it's a really good Facebook page, like a lot of good football conversation there. You guys will definitely want to check it out. Um, if you're big football fans and you want to have good debates and good conversation there, so make sure you guys go check them out. But yeah, we're doing the divisional round, Nate. Take it away, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, we got some interesting games, some uh, some upsets, possibility. Uh, can I just say, uh, a lot of these picks I made last week were coming from a Bengals fan, and this week mm-hmm. uh, nothing has changed. <laughs> uh, but let's move into the first game. Um, so on Saturday, two games we played, the Los Angeles Rams versus the Green Bay Packers and the Buffalo Bills versus the Baltimore Ravens. And then on Sunday, you've got the big division game, the Pack or the Buccaneers and the Saints and uh, the Browns and the Chiefs. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit more interested in the Saturday games. That's just me. Um, But let's hop right into it with an interesting game. We'll start off a little bit slow. Um, Well, for some people, it's slow. For some people, it's really close. Um, The Packers and the Rams. It's going to be in Lambeau Field. Um, The weather's supposed to be at freezing or below. Um, A lot of people are influencing their picks on that. So, um, it doesn't look like there's a lot of, um, let's say, division in this game. A lot of people think, you know, a certain team's going to win. Sanjay, let's hear who you think's going to win. Are you going to go with the flow? Or are you gonna I am going with the flow, it? man. I'm sticking with my bracket from last week. I'm taking Aaron Rodgers and the Packers in this match. Don't get me wrong. The Rams' defense is legit. They're monstrous. You saw them literally pull off pick six last week. Like, they're legit. What else can you say? Like, they come ready to play. And they can put up points by themselves if they have to, honestly. But – Aaron Donald is nicked up. Jared Goff is nicked up. I think their backup is Blake Bortles at this point. So if it comes to that, I don't think it's that's him. a huge advantage. He's probably better just he's honestly putting. In, he's not in LA anymore. I believe it's Bryce Perkins from Virginia. So no, Bryce Perkins. Okay. Yeah. So I don't even know who that is. So that should tell you enough. Yeah. But my point being, the Rams are kind of nicked up right now. I know their defense is still there, but I don't – this isn't a league anymore where I believe you can just win with defense alone. You need at least a semi-competent offense. And last week, I know they put up 30 points, but if you were watching that game, it was some of the messiest. And the offense only put up 24 points. Let's get that clear. Well, 23. The point being, that was one of the messiest games I have seen in a long time offensively. So, like, please don't take last week as thinking, oh, wow, but they just put up 30 last week. This offense is stagnant? Like – Goff is clearly not able to throw the ball with his usual motion. It doesn't matter how much space his receiver has. You saw him literally just completely overthrow, underthrow guys. The accuracy was – he was shooting – he was just shooting and firing, hoping somebody would pull it down. Like, he is not 100%. I don't think he's even 50%. And then throwing-wise. And then Aaron Donald, their lead defense lineman and pass rusher, nicked up too. He'll probably end up playing, but – no, no, man. And then you go to the Packers side, offensive juggernaut, Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon coming on now in that backfield, Devontae Adams. Like, even MBS has honestly been doing kind of good these last few games. So, and I don't even need to say anything about Aaron Rodgers. Like, it is what it is. This man is really doing his thing. And that Green Bay defense is kind of nice, you know? Like, they have a decent pass rush. They could get to golf a good bit. I'll say this. The X factor will be if Cam Akers – can control the clock for the Rams. If he can do that and keep the game on the ground, the defense can get a couple stops and they can start to try and play with a lead. I think they have a shot, but if they get in a hole, which I think they will, I don't see the Rams winning this game. So I'm taking the backers. All right, let's go cheese heads uh, for Sanjay Hunter. What's your call? Are you joining the cheese heads? Are you going to hop on the, I don't know, the McVay bag uh, wagon or something? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, First off, let me say, hopefully that the Eagles get Sean McVay 2.0, Joe Brady. Um, so just thought I'd put that in there, but I don't think it's going to happen. But uh, I do think it, 
while they're nicked up, I think Aaron Donald is going to be – he's going to be 100%. I mean, <laughs> that dude hurt. Dude trains with knives. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, that dude is – that dude's going to be 100%. Outside of him, though, they are kind of nicked up. And Sanjay kind of stole one of my points. Cam Akers and the Rams' offensive line versus the Packers' run defense. The Packers' run defense has been kind of doing better as of late and in, in the back end of the season. And, Nate, I am going to let the, the weather influence my pick as well. <laughs> um, Jared Goff in, in, in the cold, guy who's grown – who grew up in California, I believe. He played at Cal. He plays in L.A. now with a bad thumb. <laughs> that is a recipe for disaster. That, in my opinion, is really going to affect this game. Um, I mean, this is where it's all going to start with Cam Akers because whoever can control the – these are the two teams that are t- – they're the top two teams in time of possession this year. So whoever can control the clock is going to win this game most likely, right? And the Rams are going to try to feed Akers early, I think. It's just, one, it's their kind of just their style, especially with Goff being a little bit nicked up. Um, the cold, you're going to want to keep the ball on the ground in this type of weather. And then, like I said, um, Goff's thumb, just not not 100% still, I don't think, at least in my opinion. I, I don't know how you could play even two weeks after having thumb. I had thumb surgery. It was nowhere near the significant the significance of Goff's. And I was – I was <laughs> I mean, I'm not an athlete, but I was down and out for, like, at least two weeks. So, um but, yeah, the Packers have got to get key stops and get off the fields. You know, I think that they have Chris Barnes in the middle, who's been playing better recently from what I understand um, at the end of the year. So that's going to be nice. I mean, like I said, the run defense really did kind of improve down the stretch. Will the Packers be rusty coming off the bye week, though, with that defense? That's a big thing because that bye week really can affect some teams. I don't think it will affect the Packers. But, yeah, look, golf's a hurting puppy right now. <laughs> um you know, it sounds like he's practicing full, but I, I, again, I don't think he's 100%. And when he is under pressure, he is one of the worst quarterbacks in the league. He is literally a turnover machine. He has turned the ball over 11 more times than Carson Wentz in the past two seasons. And Carson Wentz turned the ball over quite a lot this year. And I love Carson Wentz, and I'm saying that. So, um, and then the other thing I'm looking at, Devontae Adams versus Jalen Ramsey. I mean, Devontae has just torched everyone this year, but Jalen Ramsey's kind of been that eraser in coverage when they've had big receivers. How much will he actually be shadowing Devontae, though? I mean, he's not going to be on him every snap. That's not really the Rams' style as a defense. Um, And how much is Rodgers going to attack, you know, Ramsey? Because even – I mean, Rodgers can place the ball so perfectly, it doesn't matter what cornerback is there. Um, As long as Devontae just gets a little bit of separation, not even a lot, maybe not even separation. He he just makes the catch. Um, And then also – Going off of that, if Ramsey can kind of be that eraser, they do have Darius Williams, the guy who picked off that screen pass last week. He is having a phenomenal year. He's not getting enough credit. He's no slouch in coverage. He's in his third year in the league. Guy from UAB, me and Sanjay interviewed a guy from UAB who's a cornerback. I mean, they've got a nice secondary over there. They've got another cornerback coming up from UAB who's supposed to be pretty good in the draft this year. But, I mean, that screen pass was <laughs> – you are not supposed to be able to pick that pass off. That is not a player you're supposed to be able to make, and Darius Williams made it. Um, and then also I want to talk about, like, If Adams is taken out of the equation, again, big if. I don't expect it to happen, but if he is, how will the Packers' offense respond? Because when I think think Adams hasn't had his biggest days, I think it's more so been just the Packers utilizing matchups and and their game plan more more so than Adams getting taken out of the game, right? Um, But in this one, maybe he is taken out of the game, just saying. But if he is, maybe, you know, Maybe the Packers will struggle a little bit, but I don't think so. Again, this is kind of like so – I, I read an article that was saying, like, it's the final exam for the Packers based on, like, if, how many – which which part gets taken out of the equation and how they respond. I don't think it's going to affect them that much, even if he is. But, you know, maybe maybe it will. Um, but a couple of predictions. I think um, credit to Packers wire they pointed this out. Someone's going to get a blocked punt or field goal in this game. These are the two worst special teams uh, units in the game from what I've read. So one of those can happen. The Rams have limited tight ends, but they can struggle in the red zone. So I think Big Bob is going to score. Big Bob Tanyan, uh, the man, the goat, the guy who got snubbed from the Bowl Bowl. And I, th- I just think the Packers are going to win. I mean, golf is golf is not used to playing in the cold, let alone if there is snow that is still continuing into tomorrow. Um, bad, the bad man, Aaron Rodgers. He's used to all this. I mean, the Rams are banged up. I'm taking the Packers 31, 23. They're going to cover the six and a half spread. So I, I took a little long on this one, but again, like you, Nate, you mentioned before the pod, this is one of the games you like. Mm-hmm. This is to me, this is also like the best game of the weekend as well. Mm-hmm. Well, not best game, but the game I'm most interested in. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to be the lone wolf here. I'm picking the Rams to win. I'm going to stick with my uh, quarter season uh, prediction with the Rams making it to the Super Bowl. Nice. Um, 
So uh, I watched a lot of the Seahawks Rams game last week, and I saw a lot of um, I saw a lot of interesting things. And then I, I I read some reports on the offensive plan for the Rams for that last week. They never expect they never uh, were, were going to start Jared Goff at all, even if he was healthy. They were going to use John Wolford and his lack of film and just completely confuse the Seahawks and if this continued moving into the Packers so that hit was brutal for John Wolford so I look at the bad offense after Wolford got injured on the Rams and don't hold that against them because that was never their plan um, Sean McVay is a, you know people say he's overrated but he is a he's a pretty smart dude and he had a game plan specific for Wolford to be used and when he was out it was like they went back to their defaults which aren't the best but it got them the win um as far as, you know, it being in the cold, the Packers play phenomenal in the cold weather. Um, somewhere over 75% of their wins when it's like low 32 in Lambeau Field, which is just crazy. Um, it's hard to bet against that fact. Um, but you look at some of the teams they've played in the past that they've lost these last uh, these last few weeks. And I know you can, can't say, oh, look at the past few games. They're a different team now. But the Packers, in my opinion, their, their offensive scheme has been very similar throughout the whole year. Um, and so you look at a game like the Buccaneers, that was one of the games that they lost to pretty, pretty bad. Um, and you look at some of those statistics, five, uh, five sacks for over a hundred yard loss, uh, six QB hits after those on top of those sacks. And, um, then you look at the two other losses, the Vikings and the Colts, where they allowed, uh, over 140 rush yards, uh, there and over four uh, rushing touchdowns. And so I, I kind of broke this down for the Packers. Their cons are when, 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 um, what's his name? Aaron Rodgers gets pressured a, a lot, not just a little bit, because you can get pressured. I, I think Aaron Rodgers is okay at that, but to get constantly pressured is just a bad thing. On top of that, the 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 Packers are banged up on their offensive line. David Bak Tari is out. Um, Jared Vatiari. here Vatiari is out. They have three uh three offensive linemen out this week, and and David is one of the best out there. I mean, he made the Pro Bowl, right? I think. Yeah, so yeah. that's a big blow. Um, as far as Aaron Donald being banged up, I mean, the dude probably broke a rib in the play, you know, and he st- still would be playing pretty well, you know. that um, Their linebacker core, I think, is underrated, and they might be able to hold Big Bob to some uh, to some red zone, you know, some red zone third down blocks. Um, as far as um, the – Jalen Ramsey and Devonte Adams matchup. I think if there's anybody that's going to stop Devonte, it's Jalen Ramsey. Um, I mean, you can't. I, as much as I hate Jalen Ramsey, I hate the guy. Like, like just so much. But he's held. I think he's held his entire. Who he's covered. He's only allowed 300 passing yards the whole season, which is crazy. Held D Hop to 50 yards. Um, you know, top tier wide receivers. And in my opinion, I think D Hop one on one is better than Devonte Adams. That's just my opinion. And so if, if Ramsey sticks to Adams, that like Hunter said, that's not like the Rams defense that would completely throw them off. They wouldn't be playing as much, you know, um, cover and more, more, uh, and no zone. It would be more, you know, man to man, which they don't usually do. Well, they do, but not every play like Hunter said. So I think we might see some different, different schemes here. Um, as far as the Rams, Jared Goff, maybe whether he's hundred percent or not, I don't think that's the win condition for the Rams here on offense. Because if you look at the past games where the Rams have, have won and lost, they, they haven't won games where G- Jared Goff throws for 400 yards, six touchdowns, you know, zero interceptions. He doesn't have to put up big numbers. He just not, has to not turn over the ball. That's the big thing here. When he throws two, three interceptions, they lose the game. And that's something he can't do. And so if, he, if they limit his, his throwing, hopefully that will limit the interceptions. Cam Akers has been hot. If he cools off, that'll be bad, but I think he's going to stay hot. The guy was phenomenal last week against the Seahawks, um, and I think he'll do really well against the struggling Packers rushing uh, def- or rush defense. It's not the best run defense in the league, not very good. Um, so I'd like to see um, Cam Akers pop off. I think Aaron Donald's going to have a few sacks. I'm taking the Rams here. It's going to be a 21-18 game. I think it's going to be a little bit lower scoring just because of the cold weather. Not going to be as much big plays. Um, but that's me. 